Hey everybody, welcome to Testimony House and our new show, The Chosen Explained. My name is John Simmons, so thankful you've joined us, where we're going to break down the theme of Season 2, Episode 1, where we see James and John as highlighted as the main characters of this episode. Kevin, did you notice that uh, The Chosen was using these two people to sort of weave a line through this story uh, here in the first episode? Well, not at the beginning, uh, but definitely at the end, when you could really, that's what the, one of the, in our review of the first uh, episode that we have on here that you can watch, um, my big takeaway at the end of the episode was it just so much felt like an actual TV show, yeah. because it, it was a story within a story. It had a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yeah. And yes, we know that the, the, the chosen, or there's an overall story arc, <clears throat> obviously, mm -hmm. but this episode had its own kind of story arc yeah. and it involved James and right. John. And so, uh, which I love. Oh, I love it. Yeah, the that's... idea of the chosen, it's all about the disciples and that, you know, we have to take time to develop and learn who these 12 guys are. So many of us just think about the main guys. It's brilliant writing. Yeah, it just, that. it really is it, uh, that, that I, cause no other Christian produced like uh, content has this kind of feel has this kind of uh you know real yeah. storytelling tv show binge worthy um kind of writing that i just i can't hard wait. to binge when we're caught up though <laughs> we have to go back there and rewatch everything yeah 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 so makes it yeah. hard to wait Tick -tick. Yeah. <laughs> so my guess is yeah that so you're, we're trying to apply that you know future episodes may look and feel very similar that's where i feel in my heart they're going with this now i, I could I be too. wrong about this but you know it seems to me that y maybe we'll see this in the upcoming seasons and it'll be cool to see if i'm right or not yeah. uh that upcoming episodes up, up, upcoming episodes that we see a different you know apostle sort of have a through line that jesus is trying to lead them somewhere a mini or, story arc yeah an episode story arc uh, highlighting each apostle or maybe two or three apostles like this one obviously they were brothers yeah so it made sense to and pair these, the yeah. two together i mean scripture does call them the sons of thunder I, and jesus got to do it in the show too in this <laughs> yeah. scene here if you got this is a this is when he called them sons of thunder and i love that because that you know besides uh simon peter those are the only two that got nicknames jesus nicknamed three people and those were yeah. at J uh, sons of thunder and peter mm -hmm. man and so it was really cool to watch their trajectory we're going to play a couple clips in this episode of the breakdown uh the first one i'm going to start out with was sort of james and john getting excited about being able to plan out Jesus's future. Let's watch. Yeah. Hey, where are you going? To tell Jesus our plan. The group said to leave it alone. They also said he gets to make his own decisions. So, let's let him. Uh, why do you think he picked us to plant those fields? I'm starting to wonder about that. If I had known it was a Samaritan's Come field. On. Jesus will sort it out. Rabbi, ah, you couldn't wait, could you? We're well, sorry, we just uh, wanted to clear a few things up, if that's okay. By all means. You Jewish boys are far from home. Yes, as a matter of fact, we are. Shalom to you too. Here's our traditional Jewish greeting for you. Don't lift a finger. That was a warning. Try it again and see what happens. Quiet, Big James. Shalom to you too. <gasps> you filthy dogs! I said quiet. Let us do something. And what would that achieve? Defending your honor. They reviled and humiliated you. They deserve to have bolts of lightning rain down and incinerate them. Yes, fire from the heavens. Fire? You said we could do things like that. Say the word and it will happen. Why not? We knew we couldn't trust these people. We shouldn't have come here in the first place. They don't deserve you. The Sons of Thunder earning their nickname, trying to call fire down, fire. From, <laughs> fire down from heaven. Uh, you said we could do those things. I love their faith, you know, and uh, uh -huh, the scene uh -huh. starts out, though, with this idea that James and John want to be part of the planning process to sort of guide where Jesus is going to go. And so mm -hmm. we see later in the episode, and if you watch our uh, other show where we did the Samaritan breakdown, Samaritans explain, and we'll put that in the cards so mm -hmm. that you can sort of see why that interaction took place with those guys on the road and why they got spit at and why they were getting rocks thrown at them, Kevin. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I, uh, I, I would even take it a step further. I don't know if they want to be a part of the planning. I think they wanted to do the planning. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, yeah, this, uh, they definitely, uh, they want uh, to be boss guys. 
Yeah. Sure, like who wouldn't? I mean, it's, yeah, they really. I mean, it just. Uh, and you can even see, like Peter was a little. Uh, yeah. The, uh, and Andrew, I think, were just a little set off. Everyone was like, okay, well, I guess maybe you know these yeah. guys might have a have a reason to be. Uh, puffing their chests out and yeah. thinking they did the you field know. but even it seemed like even the other apostles realized like no he's doing this to teach you a lesson sure. but james and john you know they dug this field they feel like accomplished jesus has given them praise and honor and you know no yeah <laughs> it's for a reason it was all leading up to this yeah yeah i i being a student myself of you know and still learning about the word of god and understanding the gospel of john uh the behind it you know if if those maybe you're, you're new to christianity or you're not even saved yet or you've been saved a long time but no one's even pointed this out you know the four gospels are written sh highlighting a different aspect of jesus mm. so you got matthew uh mark luke and john and matthew which and and the chosen yeah, talks yes. about this and winks at it is that well, matthew wrote the gospel to show that jesus was the promised messiah in prophecy which is why you know it takes it takes checking off all the boxes. Mm -hmm. So when you read Matthew, it checks all of the the messianic prophecies, including his lineage having to come from David. Yeah. And so uh, and then you got uh, Matthew uh, writes or uh, Mark, sorry, yeah. writes it in the perspective of Jesus as man because we know that Jesus was a hundred percent man and a hundred percent God. Mm -hmm. Then you got Luke, who Jesus as the servant. And finally, we get to John, which was episode is highlighting and yes. talking about yes. John and starts out with John right, trying to realize the importance that he's going to have to write a gospel. The Holy Spirit has probably put it on his heart. Look, you need to write these things down. And he is really, you know, taking this very seriously and deep prayer and deep, you know, commitment that he wants every word to be just right. Yeah. And, and when he writes this gospel, when you read in which one of my favorite gospels and most is that G, it highlights that Jesus is God and that, 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 you know, John had had this revelation that one that you know, he was the loved one. He was loved by he even Jesus. says that in this episode. He yeah, says, he calls, I, I was the one who was loved. He never yeah. in, in his gospel. He never refers to himself by name. Yeah. He refers to himself as the one whom Jesus loved. Because that was the revelation that he got. Mm -hmm. And two, that Jesus was God. And this whole entire episode is the beginning of that. And his coming, the beginnings of coming into that revelation. is that That's what I got out of it. This is Kevin talking. Maybe you got something else out of it. And I'd love to hear about it. You know, please, you know, put in the comments below. You know, what, what was your takeaway from this episode? But really, uh, I, I, I loved it so much because... It was the greatest story arc to really introduce the beginnings of John's transformation into realizing he's the one that's loved. Yeah. And it is a transformation. Uh, you see this throughout the episode, these sort of training moments where Jesus is setting James and John up to learn something new. And I think the biggest moment in this show, uh, as far as the reaction comes from the haunted room scene. And you know what I'm talking about. We're about yeah, to play yeah. it for you. And uh, so let's watch this and let's talk about Love the it. aftermath. I'll be honest up front. I only have five extra bedrooms, and two of them are drafty. And I, uh, they usually sleep on the ground. I think they'll be fine. <laughs> are you sure this isn't a problem? I'm dying anyways. I don't need the house anymore. Where is Jesus? You have certainly livened things up around here. You got me in a good mood just to fit in. <laughs> Come in. Shall we? Right. One of the rooms is haunted by my dead grandmother. Oh, I'll take that one. <laughs> I'll take that one, he says, here at the end. What an amazing scene. It's so unexpected to see that humor from Jesus. It brings levity to the show and what we're seeing there. Uh, the Samaritan, uh, or not the Samaritan, the, the woman at the well and her husband there as they're mm -hmm. going to spend the She's night with She's a him. Samaritan, but yes. The idea that Jesus uh, <laughs> wants to go sleep in the haunted room, I, yeah. it caught a lot of people by surprise, Kevin, because oh, totally. the message boards and the, and, and the comment pages and everything that I've seen on YouTube or Love Facebook it. talking about this, is it's brought up a couple things. Oh, that was hilarious. Hilarious. That was the number one thing. For sure. Everybody thinks it's so funny. I the other thing right. that I've seen is it's caused a couple threads of like conversation, which is great for oh. a show like this. Like You're we're not stepping on people's toes a little bit. What oh, do you mean? Sure. What does it haunted mean? You know, what does yeah. it mean to be haunted? Can Jesus is, is you know 
and yeah. all these questions are popping up. And so, yeah. you know, when and to, and to keep on the line of today's episode is we're trying to walk through James and John's transformation and the theme of this episode and what we believe will be uh, the course of the season as we see different episodes featuring different people is that we're going on a journey with these guys, developing their mm. character. God's going to do a work through them. And so for so many people, it's like Dallas was like, well, people are going to have a question about this haunted room thing. And so like they addressed it in the, in the following scene. We're going to play that and talk a little bit. What's happening? You don't even have to be there to perform miracles. Don't sound so surprised, John. One day you'll be given authority to do things I do. Even greater. Wait. I'm sorry. Can you say that again? <laughs> so, how did you sleep? Oh, well, it, uh, it took me a while. I was a little scared by what Neraya said about this room being haunted. <laughs> oh, come on. It's not haunted. Why didn't you correct him when he said it was? I don't address everything at once with new converts, Big James. Well, I'm ready for breakfast. <clears throat> I'm thankful before you, living and enduring king, for you have mercifully restored my soul within me. Great is your faithfulness. Ah, uh, that's so good. Yeah, I, I, I love it. I, I, I thought that was a great way of uh, maybe bring, grounding it or maybe uh, appeasing some of the people that are pulling their hairs out. Like, what? What did he say? Why did, you know? Haunted. What's going on? You know, he's okay with that? What am I watching? Like, yeah, he like, didn't, you know, yeah. He, he didn't, like, go in. I, uh, you know, uh, pick whatever tradition or, you know, you think that, you know, he should have handled it or how, you know, think the church should handle a situation like that. But I, I loved it. I loved all the thing about it. I thought it was completely appropriate because, you know, we had talked about mm -hmm. this. First of all, it, 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 I think it goes right into the, the, the grace and the, the love of Jesus. You know, this man had just opened up his home to 10 people. Strangers. Strangers to come in. Who were Jews. To, yeah. <laughs> to, yeah, all that. <laughs> Keep piling it on because that's, that's absolutely yeah. right. And so this man has just literally, he's just, you know, is Jesus here? Please come in. And do you really think that it would have been appropriate for the first thing to Jesus do would to be to scold to rebuke the man mm -hmm. for thinking that his dead mother-in-law or whoever is ha is haunting a room? You know, of course, you know, he's he just he but he's now he's letting people know around him like this is not something you should fear. Yeah. You know, I you know, I, I'm the Christ. First of all, these things are going to flee the yeah. second I walk. If that's even true, they're going to they're not going to be there by the time I get in that yeah. room. Which is almost every attitude every Christian should have when somebody says, oh, you know, that might be haunted. Get out well, of here. Please, I hope I'll cast out some devils. <laughs> like, you know, point me to the haunted room, please. <laughs> and I will, you know, I, I, that's literally, I would now, that would be my reaction. And when I saw that that's how they wrote Jesus' reaction, in, in, you know, in a more humorous way. Sure. I loved it. I, lo I absolutely loved it. I thought it was appropriate. But I know, you know, there are, I'm sure there are a few people that maybe didn't like that i think for the most part it sounds like people were excited that it was there and it, and it brought a lot of joy to a lot of people considering yeah. how many people are commentating about it what i want to sure. take away from this is that you know we're talking about james and john's through line and so in this scene you know jesus does a couple things which i'm really like mm. well about the writing of the show and also it's probably speaks to what jesus would have done in real life you know which is what they're trying to you know show here we you know all these scenes aren't accurate they're not scriptural but you sure. know it, it we're it's trying to get a heart behind yeah. it. It's a spirit behind it. Yeah. And the spirit behind this one was that Jesus wants to wake up. And, and first off, he, he explains a couple things. He says, look, I don't teach new converts every single thing. Yeah. Yeah. The second I meet them. And <laughs> isn't that a lesson for yeah. all? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. And that's from coming from a teacher myself there. Well, God has had to teach me and grace. There are times where you just don't teach yeah. or it's not time to teach that yet. Just let that go. You know, you don't have to be right about every single thing. You don't have to point out everybody's errors every single time. Because sometimes it's a, it's more appropriate just to give them grace. Yeah. And, and that's what Jesus did, you know, just, yeah. you know, and just made light of heart of it. And I love that. The other thing that I really, it was simple, but it spoke volumes to me personally. is when you see Jesus, he sits off the bed. And the first thing he does is he's about to pray and he's got his hands raised and, and, and the other two guys follow suit. So you can tell that there's been a progression. Trained. Yeah. They've been trained yeah. to do this. Taught. They're watching Jesus and that like, they're not, they're being influenced in a way that we're influenced as we read the gospels and Jesus says, blessed are this. And you know, you do this and you get this. And like the different teachings that are throughout the gospels, like we're seeing it manifest for the first time, you know, mm -hmm. 
in this story of like these guys get it you know they they are following the the teachings of Jesus well and they're displaying uh, what it looks like to be a disciple because yes. a disciple emulates they watch and they, I think it was uh oh, I think it was in the first season I don't know which episode but Andrew I think it said you know we just watch them like what mm-hmm. do we do like I think Peter was talking to his brother Andrew and saying I don't know what it is to be a disciple I don't know how to do this I'm like I, I why would he choose me and and Andrew, you know, he's like, I'm scared of messing up. And Andrew says, he's like, I am too. He says, like, but I just, we just watch him. Mm-hmm. Let's just watch him. Just watch. And that's really, I mean, that's 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 the the idea that behind behind discipleship and just you you watch the teacher, you emulate, you do what the teacher does, you say what the teacher says, you behave the way the teacher behaves, and then you become to you know all of a sudden you are looking and acting that's right. and sounding just like the teacher. Yeah, and that's what these guys are showing already is spending that time with Jesus, um, that they are emulating him even in prayer time before breakfast. I love it. Yeah, this whole story arc that they're going to be on, where they get to the point where we saw in the beginning of the episode, the fast forward, where John's about to write the gospel, and he's yeah. he's interviewing his buddies and you know trying to understand you know what is it that I write, and he's having some real internal dialogue questions that we're seeing on the show where he's like, mm-hmm. what am I trying to write here? What am what story am I trying to tell about Jesus? As you as you shared, like the different right. parts of the gospel and what they were trying to highlight and the transformation that John was on and the you know, and so we get to see some of this in our last clip of this episode where we get to see the the decision making that was going on in John's mind. Okay. I'm not in a hurry to write the whole book, but I do want to get the eyewitness stories now while we're together. Isn't Matthew going to write something? He's only writing about what he saw and about what Jesus told him directly. But I was there for things that Matthew doesn't know about. I was in his inmost circle. He loved me. He loved all of you. He loved all of us, Kevin. And this mm-hmm. is the scene that I love. You know, John's just talking about, you know, I don't need to write it all today. I'm trying to get the testimonies today. I want to hear right. the stories, but then I want to think. I want to dwell. And we see later in the episode yeah. when he they, they overlay uh, Genesis and John 1 uh, back to back as, as Jesus is doing uh this basically the sermon in the in the synagogue there where he's reading out of the Torah and yeah. uh, and it overlays with John in the future re, uh, reading from John one yeah then and that's that, I thought that was the most really powerful scenes of of tying it all up um, and the journey of John because here it's just you know John has just gotten a tongue lashing oh, from yeah. Jesus <laughs> he's got he's, a new nickname and everything. <laughs> he's still stinging from it he's just been humbled. And, uh, and Jesus, you know, just graciously and lovingly invites him in there to pick out a scripture to read. And he, you're talking about who's worthy. And, and, you know, and, and Jesus, you know, they talk about, you know, Jesus says, you know, I am, you know, a man. But he also says, I am who I am. Mm-hmm. And for a study of scripture, it's the same words that, you know, Moses at the burning bush. And he says, what is your name? Who are you? I am who I am. Mm-hmm. So here Jesus is saying, I'm man. But I'm also God. Yeah. And John is just, I think at that moment, I believe that when they're the reading into it and the way and the, the tear running down John's eyes as Jesus is reading the word and coming to the realization that he is the word. He is God. God's reading his own words. Mm-hmm. Like, you know. Yeah. And, and so and then and, and that's like this whole this whole revelation, the light bulb coming on and the tear coming down his eyes. And, and realizing that in spite of all of his, you know, and here's John at the beginning of these episodes starts out is, you know, um, racist, bigot kind mm-hmm. of attitude, you know, hating uh, Sumerian people without even really knowing them just because they're different. Their culture is different. They live in a different part of the land. Um, but really, I mean, just a, a hateful mm-hmm. uh, heart towards him yeah. and not loving much. Like yeah. he was not, this was a not, chosen apostle. Who's right. Dead. <laughs> who is going to write about the love of God yeah. who knew, didn't walk in love. Like, you know, again, here God's on a, I'm going to pick the one that's full of hate or yeah. the heart that is, you know, hostile and hot tempered and is ready to call down fire and lightning to kill people. Call because, down fire. Because <laughs> yeah, fire, you know, <laughs> And he's ready. He's ready to strike him dead because they threw a rock at him or yeah. some mud clots. Uh, and this is the guy. And this is the. And this is what I love about the Lord. He's like, yeah, that's the person I want to express 
my nature as love that mm-hmm. I that I love that he, he's going to walk out with the revelation that I'm loved by God that God loves me I'm the one that Jesus loved and that is so that that's so powerful and it's so true it is so scriptural uh, it is exactly how God operates in the world today uh, he calls us to do the things that we could never do where we would eat, we'd scratch our head like you you have picked the wrong man yeah um, I love it and uh, and so uh, yeah, just to, for him to have that realization that watching, and I would, I mean, couldn't you imagine listening to Jesus read scripture like that to be in that room? And, and I would have been teared up too, probably. Oh, <laughs> amazing. What a moment. It's such an encouragement for all of us who are living today who know that we have uh, a Savior who died for us and he's still alive and he's still able to bring salvation into our hearts. All we got to do is believe with our heart and confess with our mouths. The, those of us who have, who have found Jesus and have this relationship with them, we have the opportunity to talk and speak and hear from God, just like the apostles did. We have the ability to be taught by him, to walk in his teachings and to sh- be salt and light and share the love of Jesus in our own lives, wherever we go. So as we watch this show, as we begin to tackle these themes of these episodes, it's all directed to help us in our own faith walk so that you, when you go out in the world tomorrow, your job, your, your friendships and all the things that you're doing, that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. I mean, we want to be to see you walk and thrive in it. So if you're looking and want to find God's plan for your life, we encourage you to subscribe to Testimony House because we have a number of different videos, resources. We have books out there to try and help you discover God's plan and purpose for your life. We have a 12 question quiz you can take on our website, testimonyhouse.org. All of the things that we're doing, including these chosen breakdowns and reviews, are to help you understand that God has a meaningful place and a purpose for you here on earth. So subscribe if you want to. Kevin, any last words? No, just uh, make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe, share, uh, and uh, look for the next one. All right, guys. Until next time, we pray you discover a future and a hope for your life today.